Hi, my name is Debbie. I've just finished my second year in molecular bioengineering and I'm from the Wirral, which is right next to Liverpool in the northwest of England. I chose to study at Imperial because it was one of the few universities that offered bioengineering in the way that I wanted. Most universities offered general engineering with the chance to specialise in third year, but I wanted that biology aspect throughout the entire course. The application process was fine. During my interview, I had some brain teasers and some technical questions just to get a feel of how I problem solve, rather than test the knowledge that I currently had. Overall, it was a really informal and pleasant experience. As far as my course goes, I really enjoy bioengineering. I chose Imperial for the specific course structure. With that, I'm still being taught a wide range of subjects relating to engineering. From practical lab work, to programming, to maths, to chemistry, to biology, to mechanics and so on. This course is well suited to someone who hasn't quite worked out the specific area they want to work in. I'm being taught skills which are transferable in many industries, so I still have flexibility when I finally decide on the specific career path. I would class where I live as fairly rural, a lot of green space, the bus comes once an hour, that sort of area. I've always wanted to live in a city. When it came to choosing a location for uni, London was just my first choice. Knowing how pricey London is, I figured I'll have the most support living in London as a student. That being said, my biggest concern was finances. Compared to the likes of Liverpool, I've always heard that London housing is way overpriced, it's impossible to eat out and things like that. Like I said, having the ability to be supported financially, especially with student loans, still encouraged me to apply there. I also came to London not knowing anyone. All of my friends chose Northern unis and I didn't have any family in the city, so I prepared myself to come to London alone. That wasn't too much of an issue for me because I knew I could still communicate with my friends and visit them in the holidays. Once you leave campus and visit the city, you understand why people say they love London so much. Before coming here, I would see a lot of weird and wonderful places online that only existed in London. So it's great to have the opportunity to actually visit these places in real life. For support, there's the College Student Hub for any logistical issues. For health and well-being, there are mental health services available where you can speak to a professional. But it may be more effective if you go to your department for help. You can approach your personal tutor, a lecturer you trust, the well-being advisor, or the well-being rep in your course, especially if it's affecting you academically. There are so many different people and equally as many societies here at Imperial. There were so many I wanted to join, but I didn't in fear of falling behind in my studies in first year. But it turns out you have much more time than you think. Right now, I'm a consistent member of the African Caribbean Society and the Musical Theatre Society. Lastly, some advice. Get a 16 to 25 rail card. It will save you so much money on the train journeys home. You don't have to be rich to afford living in London, but you do need to budget carefully. If you want to explore the city, but you're not sure where to start, I would recommend using the Eventbrite app to find events and activities in London, especially ones which are free. Whether you're thinking of moving away for uni or you're anticipating coming down in September, I hope some of these tips have been useful. All right. Thank you.